Literally so excited you're here because I have several truly high-end Dollar Tree farmhouse DIYs that I know you're going to love. If that's something you're interested in, then just keep watching. Okay, friends, to start off, we're going to take a piece of foam board from Dollar Tree, and we're also going to take nine mirrors, and I'm going to start by laying my mirrors out on the foam board. Now, originally, when I started this project, I thought that I had 12 mirrors, would, which would have been absolutely perfect, but unfortunately, since I only had 10 all together, I just did my mirror with nine square mirrors from Dollar Tree. Again, I wish that I had 12 because it would have been a much bigger mirror, but I had to do what I had to do and I just had to work with what I had. So hindsight is 2020. Next time I will make sure that I have enough, but once I have my nine mirrors laid out on my foam board, and I have them exactly where I want them. Then I just go ahead and I glue them down with some hot glue and I make sure that the sides are nice and even. Next, I'm just going to wipe the mirrors clean, and then I'm going to take my utility knife, and I get a lot of questions about my knife. I got that from Home Depot, and so what I'm just going to do is run my utility knife down the sides of the mirror to cut off any of the excess foam board. Next, I'm going to take my square dowels that I get from Amazon, and I will have them linked down in my Amazon shop in the description box, as well as the pinned comment for you. So I just pull out my dowel rods, and then I measure out the frame, and I cut that down with my DeWalt saw, also linked in my Amazon shop. So when I cut a frame, I start by cutting the two sides first. Then I sand down the edges smooth with my zip sander. Then once I have both of the sides on the sign without gluing or screwing them together just yet, then I'm going to take my other piece of dowel rod and I'm going to mark the top and the bottom and cut those pieces down as well and then sand those edges smooth. Once my frame was completely cut, then I'm going to take my stir sticks again from Home Depot and I'm going to lay them going long ways. I'm going to mark them and cut those as well. Once I had those cut, now it's time to cut the cross pieces. So I lay the first pieces down on my sign. Then I'm going to take two more stir sticks and lay them over the cross pieces that I just cut. Then I'm going to mark those as well and once again cut them down. Now that we have all of our pieces cut down to size, I lay them out on my sign to make sure that they fit perfectly. I did have to sand down a couple edges, but for the most part, they fit perfectly. And then before I take these off the sign to paint them, I'm going to mark them in their exact spot. That way, once I'm done painting, I can assemble this together really nicely and all of the pieces are going to fit perfectly. Once I labeled all of my pieces, then I just lay out a piece of parchment paper. I personally love to use parchment paper to paint my pieces on just because it's super cheap and you can just throw the piece away once you're done. Um, but you can use whatever you like. I just figured I would mention that my favorite is parchment paper. But I'm going to lay out all of the dowel rods next to each other. I'm going to paint them as if they are one piece. And then I'm going to rotate the dowel rods 
as I paint them on each side just to make my life a little bit easier and then I paint all of the rest of the pieces as well. Once those were completely dry, then I'm going to give them all a distressed coat of my Antique Wax by Waverly. As always, if you do not like the look of dry brushing, then totally skip this step. Now these are just scrap pieces of dowel that I had in my stash. I always save my scraps for stuff like this. And I knew that the edge did not have much to glue to. So what I did was took these scrap dowel rods and I just glued them on the edge of each side. And then once I was completely finished gluing them down, then I'm going to use some hot glue to glue down the frame. I also made sure to leave a little bit of the dowel rod above the mirror, if that makes sense. So that way when I lay down my stir sticks, they sit flush with the frame. Once I had the frame glued down, then I'm going to go ahead and glue down the middle pieces. Before I glued them down, I made sure to lay them down where they are supposed to go to make sure that they all fit once again perfectly. And then I had these label holders from Dollar Tree from the little crates that they have on the front of them. So I saved them and I took them out three of them all together and I screwed them down in front of each of the bottom mirrors. And then once I was satisfied with the placement of everything, I did go ahead and glue all of the pieces down on the edge of each mirror with my Gorilla Glue Super Glue. And just like that, look how absolutely stunning this mirror turned out. Now, I did want to mention that originally I was going to screw the frame together, and I totally forgot to do that. So I definitely will be doing that to make sure that my frame does not go anywhere and everything stays together perfectly. But I am so in love with this, and I cannot wait to hear what you guys think down in the comments below. If you guys are new here, welcome. I am so excited to have you. I would love if you would stick around, click that red subscribe button and become part of my crafty family. I would also greatly appreciate if you would share this video out. It really helps my channel to grow and helps YouTube to notice me a bit more. With that being said, I want you to know how much I love and appreciate every single one of you. And let's jump back into today's video. Moving on to DIY number two, I'm going to take these signs from Dollar Tree. I start by taking the hanger off and then I also lay them out on my little cutting mat and I cut about four inches off of each using my utility knife and this is super easy y'all. All you have to do is just score it a couple times, bend it backwards and then cut it from the back and then repeat that. Next, I just use my finger zip sander to sand the edges smooth to make sure that they are nice and even. Next, I'm going to take some stir sticks once again. I'm going to lay them out on the side of my signs and I'm going to cut them down to fit on the side of each sign. So all together, you're going to need four pieces. And once again, I cut that down with my DeWalt saw. 
Once they were cut, then I sanded the edges smooth. And then I'm gonna take another stir stick. I'm gonna lay it out in like a Z pattern. Now I did this live and I asked you guys what you guys thought if I should do an X or if you guys like the Z. And we all really enjoyed the way that this the Z looked, so I left it at that. But if you like the X look, then you can just lay another piece over like you just saw, mark that and cut that down. Next, I just lay out my pieces to make sure that they all fit perfectly. And then I'm gonna take them off of the signs and paint the signs with two coats of my white Waverly chalk paint, making sure to get the edges. And I also made sure to try to stay away from those middle lines. I wanted that brown to show through so that this looked like a piece of wood. Once my signs were completely dry, then I went ahead and stained the pieces of stir sticks with my Dixie Belle Voodoo stain. Now y'all know I'm super impatient, so I blow dried them to make sure that they were super dry. And then I'm gonna use my large chip brush that I get from Home Depot with some white Waverly chalk paint. I'm going to dry brush around all of the edges and then I'm gonna dry brush all of the pieces. As always, if you do not like the distressed look, then skip this step. Next, I lay my pieces back down to my sign to make sure that they fit evenly. And I always like to do this before gluing anything because once you glue it down, it's really hard to pull back up. So I just make sure that it looks really nice and then I go ahead and glue my pieces down with some Gorilla Hot Glue. And just like that, that quick and that easy, you have some gorgeous high-end looking shutters on a budget using Dollar Tree items. I absolutely love the way that these turned out. I'm so glad that I decided to stick with the Z look. And I'm curious to hear, do you guys think that these would have looked better with the X or do you love them just the way that they are? For the next project, we're gonna use the same exact sign that we used in the last DIY. And I'm gonna start once again by taking off the jute hanger. Next, I'm gonna use my hot glue to cover those holes. And then I'm gonna use my squeegee to make sure that the hot glue is flat. Then I'm gonna use my mini finger zip sander and I just wanted to show you guys how it comes in the package. It comes with the sander and it also comes with three different type of grit sanding sponges and plenty to have in your stash so i get one of these pretty often i actually go through those sandings or sanding 
blocks or sponge, whatever you want to call it, pretty quickly. So I am always needing more of those. And I do believe that they sell the refills, but I was at the store. I didn't see the refill. I only saw the entire pack. So I just grabbed it and I did get that one from Target and it was $8.99. But like I said before, I do have one linked in my Amazon shop down below. Um, but once I sanded down those holes smooth, then I painted it with my white Waverly chalk paint. Once again, leaving those lines in the middle exposed so that you can see that brown color. And then once I had the first coat on, I dried it really well and then did a second coat. I then take my large chip brush and my antique wax by Waverly and I'm just going to start by dipping my brush into the antique wax. Then I dab off the excess and start on the edges and then once I'm satisfied with the way that the edges look then I go ahead and dry brush the entire sign. Next, I take my mercantile transfer, and this is absolutely one of my favorite of all time transfers. So I cut that up, and then I'm just going to lay out my mercantile word. I'm going to transfer that on, and when I pull that up, I'm going to make sure that I pull it up nice and slow. That way I don't have any bleeding. And I swear y'all, pulling these transfers up is so addicting, it never gets old. And revealing that absolutely gorgeous image is my favorite. So once I transferred on the word, then I'm going to fit the little scale on there and transfer that on as well. And I forgot to mention that I did transfer this on with my black chalk paste obviously that's a given <laughs> but just in case I did want to mention that and I will leave all of the chalk couture supplies that I used in this video that I can link down below for you guys it will all be in one link and just keep in mind that you can add and subtract from that cart as you wish so once I had my scale transferred on then I transfer on quality dry goods since 1902 underneath the mercantile word. Then I take these two scrap pieces that I had in my stash and I'm going to paint them with my Dixie Belle Voodoo Stain. Once again, I make sure that they are nice and dry and then dry brush them with my white Waverly chalk paint. Now this part of the sign is optional and obviously, <laughs> surprise, surprise, this step is optional too. But this was added in at the very last second. I actually was not going to add these details. So if you do not like the way that these little pieces look on the side of the sign, then you can totally skip this step. I then just arranged them on my side on either side and then once I was satisfied with the placement I just lift them up and glue them down with my hot glue. And that was it for this DIY. Oh my gosh, isn't it so beautiful? The details are on point. The dry brushing is literal perfection. And I just cannot get enough of this sign. I cannot wait to hear which DIY from this video is your favorite and what you guys think of this gorgeous sign. Okay, friends, moving on to the next one. This DIY was so easy. You could probably do this in your sleep. So I have had these little letter boards from Dollar Tree in my stash for a while, and I was not too sure what I was going to do with these. But since my projects are this 
like natural wood color and white naturally y'all know how I am matchy matchy I wanted it to match so I painted those front pieces of wood white I dried them really well and then I dry brushed those pieces with my antique wax then all I did was just cut out the words or I should say pulled them apart and then I just put on my letter board farm sweet farm now you can customize this to say whatever you like I love the fact that they give you plenty of number or er, letters yeah numbers good lord help us <laughs> yeah they gave us numbers to write out words with oh good lord they sent plenty of letters so that way you could spell out whatever you wanted but since this is farmhouse and y'all know that i love my farmhouse decor i thought that farm sweet farm was the perfect saying and look how gorgeous this turned out so quick so easy and so budget friendly Now this is a bonus one. So for the last and final DIY, y'all, I have had this letter board in my craft stash for a while. This is actually a new product from Chalk Couture and I could not wait to get my hands on one and DIY this. So what this is, is a letter board. Obviously it comes with the chalkable chips you can also purchase extra chips which is what i did i purchased an extra white pack as well as black so we do have black chocolate chips as well as white so whatever your decor is you can choose so i pull out my extra chips even the black ones because i thought that it would look really nice with the black at the bottom and i did not have enough white chips to spell out what i wanted to anyway so it worked out perfectly and what i transferred on was the norman farmhouse established 2022 because that's when we moved into our home and i just take these letter transfers i will also leave them in the link down in the description box as well as the pinned comment that way you guys can find all of these supplies and i would definitely recommend to wash your transfers in between uses if you're going to use the letter for more than one chip because I did not do that y'all I was being lazy plus I was live when I did this so I didn't want to keep running in and out of the house um, but yeah I would definitely recommend to wash them in between because if you can see some of those letters the paste did not go through the silk screen all the way just because the paste was dried in the silk screen in some of the parts so I did just want to mention that but it really doesn't bother me I love rustic decor so it just kind of looks distressed but if that bothers you and um, you would like it to look nice and even then definitely wash them so once I got done transferring on all of my letters then I just go ahead and arrange them on my letter board And obviously you can put these as far apart or as close together as you like we also have a little wood piece so that way you can display your chips um, just like on one little board if that makes sense um, I will leave it in the link down below so you guys can see what I'm talking about um, but once I had all of them arranged then I just felt like it was kind of missing something so I took two more of the black chalkable chips and I had these little transfers in my stash and I believe that these transfers are from Amazon actually no one of them the chicken which you're about to see here in just a second that one is from chalk couture and then this cow that one is from amazon but i just transfer on the cow and the chicken the chicken had established and 
some year on it. I can't remember exactly which year, 1947 maybe, but I just transfer that on and then I make sure that they are completely dry and I put them on either side of the just to make it look all cohesive and even. And then that was it for this gorgeous letter board. Y'all, this thing is heavy. It is really, really nice quality. You can erase the chocolate chips so you can use it over and over for years to come. In my personal opinion, this thing was worth every single penny that I spent on it. So that was it for this farmhouse DIY video. I love that you guys love my farmhouse DIYs. I always get comments how they are truly high end and I'm so grateful for you guys letting me know that you like them. So with that being said, I love you guys so much. I want to thank you once again for being here. Again, don't forget to share this out. It really helps my channel to grow and I want you guys to know how much I love and adore you. With that being said, if nobody has told you today, you are absolutely stunning. You are worthy. You are gorgeous. Girl, you can literally do anything you set your mind to. Coming from a heroin addict who is nine years sober, y'all, if I can change my life around and make something out of nothing, you can too. And I love the fact that I now run a business where I help other people learn and grow on social media with one product that happened to help me lose 80 pounds of pure fat. So if you guys want any information on how you can earn an online income or how you can lose 80 pounds or have the best energy, focus, and mood of your life like I do, then text my number, the word biz or ketones and I will get y'all all that info. Also, if you want 40% off everything off the chalk site, text my number the word chalk. And with that being said, I love y'all from the bottom of my heart and I will catch y'all in the next one. Bye. Check out the videos that are popping up here to your left while you're waiting on my next upload or join the DIY fam here to your right.